Hi everyone, welcome to the Anxiety 101 series, a part of Seattle Children's Impact Project. My name is Kendra Reed and I'm a clinical psychologist. In this video, we're gonna be talking about identifying your anxious thoughts. So as we've talked about before, the way that you think influences how you feel and then what you do. So identifying what you're thinking in situations when you feel anxious becomes pretty important. Um, this can be hard though, because we don't often have a lot of experience stopping to think about what we're thinking. So um, think about this example. Um, your parent is home late. What are you thinking in that situation? There are lots, probably endless possible answers to that question. Some uh, answers to that question would make you feel anxious or nervous. Some answers to that question might make you feel pretty happy or relaxed. Some might make you feel kind of neutral, not one way or the other. Um, so I've given a couple of examples that I hear pretty frequently when I give this example. Um, at the hospital. So sometimes people are pretty excited, like, ooh, I screamed for dinner, I can play all the video games I want, nobody's here to monitor my screen time. So pretty excited that they've gotten away with a little bit more um, screen time or just fun time. Um, other thoughts might be, like, what if there was an accident or what if something bad happened to my parent? So thoughts like that tend to make people feel pretty anxious or nervous. But there are other thoughts like, there must be a lot of traffic. That happens a lot in the Seattle area. Um, so there are lots of different possible thoughts that people could have in a given situation. And starting to become aware of what you're thinking in those situations that impacts how you feel is one step to help you cope. So I want you to think about a recent example in which you felt anxious. Think about what was happening, what you thought, and then how did you feel? So starting to tie these different links together. So take a few minutes to do that. One thing that I do wanna talk about with you guys is that as you look at your thoughts across different situations, when you feel anxious, you might start to notice some different themes in those thoughts. We notice those too, um, and we tend to call them thinking traps. So thinking traps are just that, they are themes in your anxious thoughts. And the key thing to remember here is that all of us do this. All of us tend to think in patterns like this. But sometimes what happens is that the patterns become so common or ingrained that they start to contribute to anxiety in a way that's unhelpful. They start to make it um, things more difficult for us. So starting to identify these thinking traps is kind of like a coping shortcut of like, oh, I'm doing that thing again. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the common examples of thinking traps briefly, knowing that you can see the examples up here on the screen. Um, so as you start to think through some recent examples where you thought had some anxious thoughts, you can think about whether or not you're noticing falling into a thinking trap. So one of the most common ones I hear is fortune telling. This is predicting that something will turn out badly. Um, knowing that in reality, none of us can know the future, um, not at least with 100% certainty. Um, Another common thinking trap is all or nothing thinking. So tending to look at things as all good or all bad. I'm either going to get 100% or I'm going to totally fail this assignment. Another thinking trap is mind reading. So predicting what other people are going to think about us or something related to us and usually predicting that they're gonna think something negative. So everybody's gonna think I'm stupid, sort of a um, thought. Another common thinking trap is overgeneralization. So this is using words like always or never. So I always fail. I nev they never want to play with me. Different things like that. Another common thinking trap is labeling. So using a single negative word to describe ourselves or the situation. Like I'm stupid, I can't. A very common thinking trap is overestimating danger. 
So thinking that the negative outcome is more likely to occur than based um, than what we know is true from the evidence uh, or real life. Another common thinking trap is filtering. So paying attention to only the negative events rather than all of the information that you get in a situation. So if you were giving a talk, only noticing that like one person fell asleep and someone yawned halfway through and ignoring the fact that all of the other people were paying attention and had really pleasant facial expressions uh, while you gave your talk. Um, Another thinking trap is catastrophizing. So this is predicting that the worst possible outcome will happen and that we won't be able to cope with it. So if I make a mistake on my homework, that means I'm gonna fail the class, which means I'm never gonna get into college and I'm never gonna get a good job and then I'm just ne I'm gonna die penniless and alone. So that's an example of taking one, starting in one place and catastrophizing about the outcome of that situation. A common thinking trap that I see people experience are should statements. So things like, I should never feel anxious. I shouldn't feel sad. I should never make mistakes. Um, when these shoulds don't actually ref reflect what is true about how we think or believe or act in the world. So I want, um, as just an exercise, I recommend taking a minute um, over the next few days to practice tracking some thoughts that you experience, especially in situations when you feel anxious, and starting to notice whether or not you are falling into a thinking trap. Um, so I put up this um, thought tracker as an example of one way that a lot of people um, start to practice becoming more aware of what they're thinking in situations when they feel anxious. So take a look at this, um, give it a shot over the next few days, um, and then come back to us for the next video in the Impact Anxiety 101 series. Thank you.